Good evening, all, and good evening, all doctors. Myself, Sankal Sani, a marketing manager from Innovative Sciences. Welcome all to this interactive show by Dr. Ritu Santwani, supported by Innovative Care Life Sciences. Today we have a special guest on our. Show. She is the of the teachers, Dr. Nand Pachitkar. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am, to this show. Thank you. Yeah. Also, we have our eminent speaker, Dr. Ritu Santwani. Welcome, ma'am. Yeah, and thank you, Sankal. Yeah, we have our CEO, Mr. Amit Mela, with us on this special show. And over to you, Amit sir, and welcome to you. Yeah, hello, Amit ji. Hello, madam. Hello, yeah. madam. Hello, madam. Hello, madam. Hello, madam. Hello. Hello. So very good evening to all of you. Uh, warm welcome on behalf of entire team of InnoCare in this webinar series of Pondi Show. Thank and you. And today I have privilege of welcoming teacher of teachers, Dr. Nandita Palshekar in webinar series of Pundi show on the topic, how to preserve the biological clock. And now for the new viewers, because many of viewers would be attending for the first time. As far as Pundi show is concerned, is a platform for experts as well as young doctors. And Pundi show is the only show which has been running for last four months continuously on all weekends. The unique thing for Pundi show is not only doctors from India, but from across the globe, all over the world, doctors are getting benefited from this show. And Pundi show has been covering all aspects, be it gynecology, obstetric, sexual wellness, women's health, medical legal aspects, and current pandemic COVID, and so many other topics. Now I'd like to request Dr. Ritu, kindly introduce Dr. Nandita Palshankar. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Welcome, Dr. Nandita. Yeah. Welcome again. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Uh, a very, very warm welcome to our very own dear Nandita, ma'am. Ma'am, aapka dil se swagat hai. Hmm. I love you. <gasps> thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Ma'am, these lovely flowers are our, oh. our very own Nandita, ma'am. We can say that we are our Nandita, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. That's so beautiful. <laughs> like you, ma'am. <laughs> So friends, uh, before I introduce the ma'am, so as all of you, the Nandita itself meaning the delightful, the happiness. So ma'am is like that. Ma'am, jahan par bhi jati hai, wahan khushiya bhi khair deti hai. So first, I will read some lines for ma'am. Uh, then we will start the show. As friends, as all of you know, the Nandita madam is MD, FICOG, FCPS, FRCOG. Ma'am is director at 9 Bloom IVF Centers. Ma'am is professor in OBGY DY Patel Medical College, Navi Mumbai. Teacher for super specialty degree, FNB Reproductive Medicine. Practicing in fertility for the last 25 years. President MOX 2020 to 22. Former President Foxy 2019-20. Former President MOX 2018. Uh, there is lot of and lot of achievements in the Madam CV. Former President for IH. Vice President of ESAR in 2020, former Chairman for MSR. Ma'am have written more than 150 chapters. Ma'am received so many awards and delivered the 51 orations and delivered more than 1000 talks. So Ma'am has so many of achievements. If I achievements, then our show will end in the show. Ma'am, a very, very warm welcome to you. Thank so, you. Uh, before I will uh, start asking some questions to ma'am, uh, I want to say two lines for you ma'am. Ma'am, these lines are our hearts, which we we all are inspired by you. Na jane kaun si daulat hai, kuch logo ke shabdo mein. Na jane kaun si daulat hai, kuch logo ke shabdo mein. Wo baat karte hai, to man hi kharid lete hai. So ma'am, very very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ma'am, so first... Beautiful. Ma'am, this is our own feelings. So, ma'am, I, I want to know, ma'am, as you are a role model, we are all the gynec, 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 we are all the gynec. So, ma'am, please share some few tips for your success mantra. Uh, I think um, if you look at my life, yeah. the, uh, it's been uh, uh, ups and downs, of course. But I think the main driving force was passion. Hmm. I think uh, I was lucky that I found something that I was very passionate about. Hmm. So uh, you need to have a kind of a focus. And my sense of belief in myself, that I know that I'm capable of doing better. So passion with that sense of belief, I think, is 
is a uh, combination for success ritu and another thing that is very very important as you uh, grow in your field or even at the beginning of your career i think it's empathy meaning the feeling for others because whenever i have always you know i let me tell you of an incident that happened in my life i was a medical student and my mother had uh, some white discharge and everything so i got her to the jj hospital opd you know i was a student that time and the doctor there saw her in the opd and said she has got cancer bus just like that she's got cancer yeah. a whole house was devastated we were totally shattered you know with that uh, one word of that doctor then we took her in private we did a pap smear we did everything and fortunately it was not cancer but that's where i learned that you know you have to put yourself in the patient's shoes because it can be uh, you know very difficult for the patient so i think that empathy which we doctors need and especially when you're in this field is very very important so passion sense of self belief empathy then communication also i think it's a very important uh, uh, mantra in your life that you are able to communicate with others and uh, another thing which i really i think in my life is appreciation i appreciate small things of life yes uh, today your your uh, you know uh, you calling me on teachers day for this and calling me teacher of teachers i mean that has touched me yeah so i am very 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 happy about it so that appreciation which you have given me i think it goes a long way ritu and appreciation is very important in everyone's life and i think if you give appreciation to your peers to uh, youngsters and older people alike i think that is makes you a very good human being thank you thank you so much ma'am friends i want to share with you all in spite of having such a busy and tight schedule uh, when madam told ki ma'am ki ha ek bar hum dry run karke dekhenge show ka whether the presentation is going or not yesterday night we had done at 11:45 the dry run of the show ki jisse kuch practically kuch problem nahi aani chahiye so ma'am hats off to you itne and ma'am and one very good quality of the ma'am ki कितने भी मैम बिजी रहे कितनी भी कॉन्फ्रेंस में कितने भी लोग हो हम लोग सारे लोग जितने भी फॉक्सी कॉन्फ्रेंस अटेंड करते हैं सबकी एक तमन्ना होती है एक मैम के साथ सेल्फी जरूर होनी चाहिए <laughs> तो मैम कितने भी बिजी रहे मैम कभी भी मना नहीं करते अगर हम दूर से खड़े होकर देख भी रहे मुझे अच्छे से याद है एक कॉन्फ्रेंस थी बॉम्बे में मैं बहुत देर से देख रही थी कि मैम फ्री हो तो मैं जाती हूँ मैम को बोलूंगी एक आपके साथ फोटो खिंचानी है Means, I was thrilled, ने मुझे खुद बुलाया रही तो तुम वहां क्यों खड़ी आओ तुम यहाँ पे आओ जितने लोग ज्यादा होंगे मोर द मैरियर मैम ने बोला था मुझे अभी तक अच्छे से याद है सो मैम हेड्स ऑफ टू यू मैम वन मोर थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू नो मैम आपकी इन योर फैमिली हाउ यू डिसाइडेड टू गो फॉर इन दिस प्रोफेशन फॉर दिस डॉक्टर it's it's really crazy because hamare family mein koi medicine nahi karta koi doctor yeah. nahi hai koi nahi hai but yeah. jab se main bachchi thi tab se mujhe doctor banna tha okay i don't know it is just yeah. that doctor banna hai but yeah, yeah ivf maine aise choose kiya kyunki main jab jj hospital ke opd mein baithti thi opd mein yeah. as a resident to wahan yeah. opd mein aadhe patients aise aate the madam ye humko unwanted child hai humko mtp karwana hai और आधे पेशेंट्स ऐसे आते थे कि कि मैडम हमको बच्चा चाहिए हमको इनफर्टिलिटी है हमको बच्चा नहीं हो रहा है तो मुझे ऐसा लगता था यहाँ से बच्चा उठा के यहाँ डाल दू यू नो कि उनको हेल्प करूं सो आई थिंक माय पैशन माय इंटरेस्ट वाज किंडल्ड ओवर देयर कि आई वुड वांट टू डू आई वुड लाइक टू गो इन टू इनफर्टिलिटी टू हेल्प कपल्स हैव एंड यू नो रितु व्हेन आई वाज स्टडीइंग देयर वर थ्री थिंग्स दैट वर रियली हैपनिंग इन आवर यू नो इन द कंट्री दैट टाइम आई वाज वर्किंग इन अ यूनिट वेयर the technique was very good you know we had dr purandre dr kk deshmukh they were fantastic surgeons so you know surgery dr lopez surgery yeah. so me yeah, the technique was fantastic superb surgeons then uh, you know i used to always wonder whether to take the technique or the technology you know i was at the crossroads ki 
टेक्नोलॉजी जाओ या ये अरे बाप रे क्या टेक्निक है क्या सोच रही है चलो वो करते हैं बट ऑफ कोर्स आई फाइनली वेंट इन टू टेक्नोलॉजी एंड आई डिसाइडेड टू यू नो गो इन दैट डायरेक्शन बट आई थिंक दैट वाज वन ऑफ द द थिंग्स दैट वाज हैपनिंग इन दोज डेज एंडोस्कोपी वाज देयर यू नो जेनेटिक्स हैड कम इन एंड ऑल दोस न्यू थिंग्स इन द होराइजन एंड इट रियली मेड अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस okay okay thank you thank you so much ma'am ma'am there are some doctors are requesting for us to start the lecture so first we will listen with ma'am uh, how to uh, regarding this biological clock ma'am some doctors have joined from the nigeria they have dropping the message so today we are going to discuss how to preserve the biological clock i think that's an eternal question which has been there all down the ages and women definitely for them the biological clock is ticking and we always are looking you know the amrit which was there in our mythological days which would preserve the woman the preserve the band but definitely we haven't found our amrit yet but let's look at something which is close to it i think uh, if we look at science the cryo preservation was something remarkable uh there are many disruptions in science which actually uh bring about a great change one minute one minute question sorry so cryopreservation was one of those milestones which brought about a major change and that was something that was really needed and it gave idf a new life and uh, i will tell you why if you look at this picture this is miss diana hayden and her husband colin they uh, they are right now in nairobi there are a lot of people from africa they are in nairobi and these are the three children born and diana has had these children at the age of 40 plus you know how this was possible Diana was a young girl miss world in 2006 she came to me in december i think it was 2006 december yeah she came to me and she said i have heard of this technology in america about egg freezing and i want to preserve my eggs because i haven't found the man of my choice and i'm busy with my career and i want to do a lot of things she was the ambassador at that point of women's health uh, she was into you know breast cancer etc etc so when she came to me and we froze her eggs at the age of 34 and today look at that we were able to preserve stop her biological clock and give her these three beautiful children when she was ready for them another example that i want to tell you is about ekta kapoor i'm yeah. talking about these girls because they are icons yeah. and they have both the mobilized and motivated a lot of women when these girls came forward you know ekta kapoor had frozen her eggs for 7 years before she had the baby and she also is a dynamic or empowered girl who hadn't found a partner then finally she decided to have a child as a single mother so these are the cases where social freezing goes a long way so biological clock can be preserved for a lot of uh, indication Yes. social reason is one of them ritu poor yeah. wear and reserve nowadays i see a lot of young girls you know uh, with uh, poor wear and reserve 30 year old with amh of 0.7 0.8 that's yeah. probably because of pollution because of autoimmunity because of stress and it's very important to check the wear and reserve of these girls then hydrogenic poor wear and reserve you know you have endometriosis you've done cystectomy or you have yeah. benign cysts you have a uh, recurrent uh, dermoid cysts with which yeah. you operated yeah. or even you know uh, uh, braca1 braca2 uh, cases of breast cancer where you do a salpingo oophorectomy uh, you can have a uh, poor ovarian reserve with that genetic causes like fragile x syndrome then uh, turner syndrome all these people have a low ovarian reserve 
autoimmune disorders you know sle we give drugs which are toxic to the ovary they can mm -hmm. cause a low ovarian reserve of course cancers because of chemotherapy radiotherapy we can have poor ovarian reserve and patients of bone marrow transplantation so these are the immense number of people who actually need the biological clock to be preserved and how can we help them and that is what we are going to discuss today so i just want to iterate that braca1 braca2 in fact braca2 patients are more at risk of pr than braca1 oh. Turner syndrome, deletion of X uh, chromosome, fragile X syndrome, all these patients have. Then, you know, uh, fertility preservations like delayed childbearing, yeah. social reasons like career, late marriages, finding the right partner, history of early menopause in the family. Ovum donation program is another uh, program which is there for cryopreservation. Mm -hmm. Then in ART, we use cryopreservation in OHSS. Mm. semen samples not available low risk mm. of the patients where we do egg pooling and then mm. the individual thickness may not be available uh, appropriate and of course in certain condition in countries like germany and all you cannot freeze embryos so you might just freeze the eggs uh, there was this really the study about age related decline knowledge about how many people know and it was really dismal that people did not know about egg freezing and that is why i think i must congratulate ritu that yeah. we have this very innovative topic because yeah. the awareness is not there and i think we really need to talk about it and uh, sure. the awareness of this technology which is available to everyone now so yes. Ritu, i'm really happy you took on this topic as for the seminar yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about fertility preservation, I think the counseling is very important. You talk yeah. to them about what's fertility preservation. Of course, the options are egg donation is available, adoption is available, etc. Now, in cases of cancer patients, you know, I will discuss this a little later in the next slide. So, what is the first step in uh, cryopreservation? First is ovarian stimulation. So ovarian stimulation is very simple. You know, you can start on day two, and uh, usually in patients where you're, you know, doing ovarian and uh, oocyte cryopreservation, you like to give an antagonist cycle. So day two, you start an HMG or an FSH. You continue it and give the trigger of a GnRH analog. Okay, and yes. then uh, do the pickup and freeze the eggs. So antagonist cycle with the analog trigger so that you don't have to worry about uh, OHSS. Now, cancer has really taught us that you can stimulate the cycle anytime. In mm -hmm. fact, the August issue of 2020 Fertility Sterility, there's a, there are beautiful articles on physiology and the beautiful physiology of how random start makes sense what is the actually how you do ovulation what is the actual rise what causes the ovulation etc is amazing it is beautifully mentioned in that and ritu maybe next time i can give a lecture on that uh, you know the different physiology and what we know today is not the same as we had learned 30 years ago great so, ma'am great yeah think, yeah uh, the random protocols where we can start anytime you can just start your fsh and uh, uh, hmg injections mm -hmm. and use the antagonist protocol give the trigger and do the pickup and you get good uh, good number of eggs so what is the procedure procedure as i said you've done the ovarian stimulation which is hardly 10 to 14 days this is the counseling that you tell the patient so you take injections for 10 days you do four sonographies and then you take the trigger and you get admitted into hospital once the uh, you get admitted we do the egg retrieval under anesthesia it takes about 10 to 20 minutes to get all the eggs out with the help of the ovum pickup needle once the eggs are retrieved and are in the laboratory, we do the we let the eggs incubate for two hours. Okay, after two hours, we start the denudation, and after denudation, 
the, uh, the cryopreservation process starts. So you've identified the eggs as M2s, M1, and GV, GVs. So yeah. the M2s and the M1s are the ones which you freeze. So cryoprotected mm -hmm. after 15 minutes, and then of course, depending on whether we are doing slow freezing or vitrification, the process is done that way. The storage of, and once they are either frozen with slow freezing or vitrification, they are stored. And when you want to use them, we do thawing. Then we do ICSI after two to three hours with spindle view and laser hatching prior to embryo transfer. So this is the whole process of getting the eggs and mm -hmm. achieving a baby. Of course, the storage can be kept from typically from five years to 10 years in England. It's allowed only for five years. But during COVID times now, they've increased it to 10 years. As I told you, my patients whom I mentioned have kept them typically from seven to 10 years. So what is the difference in the technology? There's slow freezing and there's vitrification. If you can look at this graph, this blue line which is there, you know, the blue line which is there, there is a drop in temperature from plus 37 degrees to minus 96 degrees. The drop is minus 25,000 degrees centigrade per minute. It's so rapid and that is vitrification. So there are no ice crystals which will damage your spindle. Whereas in the snow freezing protocol, there is a certain gradient of dropping of the uh, temperature and it has to be in a freezer which is computer controlled and it uh, controls the drop of temperature and that it can form ice crystals, especially in the extracellular space and that can damage your insides. And I must tell you of uh, uh, one example of my patient. You know, uh, in November, I had this celebrity patient who came to me. Uh, yeah. She had nine embryos and uh, we did not have this technology. That time it was slow freezing. So okay. I had frozen her nine embryos with slow freezing because obviously she was beautiful, lean, thin, PCOS, and she'd gone into hyperstimulation. So we froze all the embryos. And then after her OHSS had subsided and we thawed the embryos, I was able to give her only one baby, you know, out of those nine embryos. Yeah. Okay. But Diana, who was frozen in December, once the, and in November, we had got the vitrification technology. And Diana, who was frozen in December, has had three babies from her eggs. Mm -hmm. so that was the efficiency of the uh, slow freezing, I mean the vitrification compared to the slow freezing. In slow freezing, you got 30-40% of the embryos back. But in vitrification, you get 99% of the embryos back. So that was what really revolutionized the whole IVF. The, the success rate, which was 30%, jumped up to cumulative pregnancy rates, which are now in the range of 60% to 90% over 4-6 to six cycles. So this is the technology which has brought about a disruption in our field and it's amazing. And this was the famous Anna Kobo's, uh, you know, RCT where yeah. she showed that uh, 16 studies, 3000 plus patients where the odds ratio showed completely in favor of vitrification that it was a fantastic technique and gave a wonderful results. Our egg freezing data at Bloom IVF today, as far we have 17,000 plus uh, eggs frozen. The donor who sites actually there's a slight mistake. The donor who sites are 12,000, uh, about 10,000 plus. Okay. And hmm. social egg freezing we've done 7,000. So total number is about 17,000 eggs and the success rates, as you can see, is 56% in a fresh donor cycle and thaw donor cycle is 64%. And believe me, it is a fantastic technology. And thanks to these two patients of mine, you know, who have talked about it openly and a lot of girls from the Bollywood, from, uh, you know, from pharma industry, lawyers, a lot of mothers came with their daughters who were going abroad for education to freeze their oocytes. And a lot of other patients, which I'm going to discuss further, have come and frozen their eggs. And it's a yeah. fantastic technology. 
So age and number of eggs is really important. The if you look at it, that if you want one good euploid normal chromosomal embryo, then if the patient is younger than 35, five more than less than five eggs are enough. Between 35 and 37, five eggs are good enough. 38 to 40, you need seven eggs. 41 to 42, you need 10 eggs. And more than 42, you need 20 eggs. Now, this is something that you need to remember when you're doing cryopreservation of patients. And you need to do the counseling and to tell them. Sometimes, you know, in cancer patients, I need to do multiple cycles because uh, their egg reserve is lower. And if we get a chance, we definitely do it. Very nice. Yeah. And do metriosis yeah. something else, Ritu, which is something which is very close to my heart. And I want to tell people that when mm -hmm. you're treating adolescent patients, when you're treating young girls who don't want to get married, who are not yet married, mm -hmm. remember when you operate for endometriosis, you're re reducing the ovarian reserve. And secondly, it's a recurrent disease. Please give them post-operative medical therapy. And keep checking on them, keep doing follow-up on them, do ultrasounds, follow-up ultrasounds, follow-up AMH for the ovarian reserve. And if you feel the AMH is dropping, do their fertility preservation. Don't tell them, uh, you know, that uh, you've got endometriosis, now you better get married fast and have a child fast. They don't want to do that. So offer them fertility preservation. And uh, in fact, I don't have that uh, study, but Anna Kobo in uh, Fertile Sterile July issue of 2020, she had uh, something like 600 plus patients and uh, they were, you know, they were all endometriosis patients and they were did fertility preservation before undergoing uh, surgery. And it's been fantastic for them. Not all of them needed it. See, remember, it's an insurance policy. We spend one lakh on our cars, no EMI. Don't we do that? True, so why do you not spend it on your fertility insurance? We all take life insurance. We should do this to preserve our fertility. Because trust me, Ritu, every girl wants to have her own child. She true, just wants to egg donation. So I think in endometriosis, we really need to look at it. Then benign non-endometriotic cysts also. Any kind of ovarian surgery reduces the AMH. So we really need to be, you know, more vigilant, be more careful. Uh, you know, when we are talking to the patients, we should be uh, telling them. Let me tell you of this patient I had who had a recurrent dermoid cyst. You know, she had two dermoids, two surgeries done, and she had come to me with a third dermoid. So she said, Doc, I mean, I said, you have to remove the dermoid. So what we did was we did stimulation. We removed all her oocytes without puncturing the dermoid. You have to be very, very careful when you do ovum pickup. You have to avoid that dermoid. And we removed all the eggs, preserved them. Then she underwent a cystectomy. And she hadn't yet found a partner. So we were able to preserve her oocytes because sometimes uh, the oocyte accumulation strategy is much better because it, is a, it gives her a better chance of future pregnancy. So dermoid endometrioma, seromucinous cyst, all these are good chances. Our, uh, our uh, uh, you know, country has tuberculosis. Yes. And tuberculosis really the ovarian reserve drops and there are enough studies showing that very own Malhotra study in 2012 and Sharma's study actually says if you treat genital tuberculosis, the ovarian function improves. But these are again patients where there is poor ovarian reserve and oocyte accumulation would be very good for these patients. And uh, if, if they are married to preserve their biological clock, I actually freeze the embryos and I keep them. You know, I keep pooling the embryos. So I may do three, mm -hmm. four pickups, you know, take the embryos, freeze them and keep them. And then uh, maybe, uh, you know, treat them. Also, age is very, very important. Remember, Ritu. So if yeah. the patient is older, you can actually preserve a fertility and uh, keep the oocytes as we did for Diana and Ekta. You know, the age is also an important factor. So fertility preservation 
as such should be done under the age of 35. But let me tell you of an example of this girl who had come to me. She was 27 years old and her AMH was 0.8. Now, when I first saw the AMH, I couldn't believe it. Now, remember, friends, one thing is very, very important. You know, when you get a report of AMH 0.8, you must repeat a second report. You can't just label a poor or well reserve on one report. You need to repeat the report. So my advice is repeat the second report at least at a two to four weeks interval and see. And if she's poor reserve, then we give her all the adjuvants. You know, I use DHEA, I use melatonin, I use CoQ, arginine, uh, you know, uh, even testosterone gel, growth hormone during uh, stimulation, etc. Mm -hmm. to collect all the oocytes. So it's very important. And this 27-year-old, I had to freeze the eggs. But remember, at 27, if you freeze about five, six oocytes, it's good enough to give one baby. So we got 10 eggs in her. And remember, when the age is young, the antral follicle count is good. You may end up getting better eggs. Okay. So please do it for these patients. I have done it for a lot of 40 plus women also. You know, uh, 40 plus women, what we do is we get all the eggs out, create the embryos. And then, you know, um, Ritu, I'm doing this non-invasive uh, genetic testing. Okay. So okay. And I see us actually, it's called non-invasive mm -hmm. chromosomal screening. Hmm. And if I get a normal euploid embryo in a 43-year-old, you know what is a pregnancy rate, Ritu? Mm -hmm. As good as a 27-year-old. Great plan, great. Huh, huh. So it's a fantastic technology. Use the hmm. technology today which is available to you to give good results to your patients. I think it's an amazing field to be in. Now, I'll just take you through two, three slides only of cancer patients. I'm not going into detail too much, but you have to, you know, this is a chart which I keep in my clinic because I do a lot of fertility preservation for cancer patients. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I told you, the 7,000 eggs that we have, a lot of them are cancer patients also who have gone for cancer therapy. So these are the drugs that are drugs with high risk. Those are the ones which should go for fertility preservation. Intermediate risk, I do advise them. But low risk ones are the ones I tell them there's no need because you will conceive naturally on your own. And it's very possible that you will not have any fertility problems. And very low or no risk. So these are the drugs. I can't remember them at all. If after the lecture you ask me, I have to go back to my slide. These are questions, okay? Okay. I keep this in my clinic, and uh, uh, that's how all my uh, residents also, you know, know about yes. it. Okay. Yes. The risk of ovarian metastasis. This is also kept in the clinic. You know, it's kind of a chart that is there. The yes. best uh, patients where ovarian metastasis is important when. Because we do a lot of ovarian tissue freezing also. So some cancers, you know, it's better to do ovarian tissue freezing. Like breast cancer stage 1, 2 uh, and infiltrating ductal type. So you can remove the ovary because they are sensitive to, to uh, they are sensitive to the estrogen progesterone. So it's their BSO is advised in these patients. So breast cancer, small cell carcinoma of the cervix, Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma, lymphoma, osteogenic carcinoma, Wilms tumor, non-genital rhabdosarcoma. The high risk is a leukemia. It's a no-no. Ovarian tissue freezing is a no-no. But I'm going to tell you something new that has been done in Burkitt's lymphoma and leukemia. And pregnancies have been achieved. And I'm going to give that as the last thought process to everybody uh, before going home. That yes, today technology has really changed and we can do a lot of things but this is again something that i keep in my clinic because we are not onco fertility i mean oh. we are not colleges mm -hmm. so as onco fertility specialists we need to keep this in our clinics if you're going to practice onco fertility so this is very simplified way in which we treat patients supposing a patient comes to me and says i don't have any time I have to start immediately my treatment to the next day. Then we do the laparoscopy and ovarian tissue removal and just freeze over. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
supposing the patient says i have 15 days then we do ovarian stimulation or we give gnrh depot so these are the things that we can give if depending on the time to gonadotoxic therapy okay so yeah. this is the combination you can use laparoscopy you can use stimulation you can use depot so nowadays we're doing a mixture also we do ovarian stimulation preserve the eggs remove the ovary after that and preserve the ovary also okay so you yeah. can have all these combinations it is all individualization it is very specific to the patient then also radiotherapy you know not every dose has a bad effect you can see this, uh, you know, the dose uh, which reduces the ovarian pool follicles to less than 1,000. 1,000 means menopause. Yes. So uh, this is, again, something which you keep in your clinic and you know about it and uh, you, uh, key, uh, you know, maintain it. See, generally, the cancers which affect the young girls are the hereditary cancers. You know, like uh, BRCA1, BRCA2, Lynch cancers, etc. So remember B Lynch cancers, etc. So these are the cancers which affect younger girls. And for them, they can be prevented also by, uh, you know, uh, cancer sparing surgery, it's known as. So which is bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. Now, in these cases, the ovary is uh, preserved. And you can actually preserve their fertility and give them a better chance. So, uh, and also if whenever they want to have a child, remember that these are usually autosomal dominant uh, genes. So you can give it to your child. So there is a 50% chance that your offspring may have the same gene. So you can actually do NICS, that is PGTM, PGT for monogenic diseases, that is autosomal dominant uh, gene is identified in the baby. And those embryos are taken away. They are not put back into the womb. So you can have the next generation which is completely free of this disease. So remember, this is the counseling that you need to give your patients who have these problems. Yes. I really love this. You have to tell me about the time. Others, I can go on. And on. Amazing, mesmerizing lecture. Ma'am, so many doctors are joining. I'm welcoming some from the Germany, some from the Nigeria. So, okay, great. very nice. Yeah. And yeah. there's autoimmune disorders also. See, now, autoimmune disorders, you see in young girls and uh, you know, cyclophosphamide therapy is given. Uh, you can give GnRH agonists to these girls. <clears throat> Ovarian stimulation and cryopreservation of oocytes is also possible and uh, if sufficient time is available. But remember one thing, these girls, remember, require effective thrombosis profile access. So LMWH is really, really important. And if ovarian reserve is sufficient, cryopreservation of ovarian tissue is also an option before you start these toxic drugs. But uh, oocyte cryopreservation is much easier and uh, but uh, you know this is very radical it's still experimental those ovarian cryopreservation so you need to take permission etc <clears throat> factors affecting the success rate i think the age is the most important factor okay. earlier the age that is the quality of your eggs so obviously the age is important the cause of infertility because endometriosis reduces the ovarian reserve etc cancer reduces the ovarian reserve then whether it's donor non-donor donor then you have good quality eggs you have good number of eggs so there's no problem stimulation protocols you know uh, like supposing uh, she's sensitive uh, the cancer breast cancer is, uh, is er pr positive her to was strongly positive then obviously you have to use letrozole protocol so there are less number of eggs then the number of oocytes that you get the cryopreservation method is generally vitrification and of course indication is ovarian tissue freezing superior to egg freezing yeah because it's more natural no it restores the natural fertility <clears throat> but the drawback is of course in those uh, cancers you know where you have a higher chance of metastasis it should not be used Live birth rates are around 30% after cryopreservation. And I think all over the world, uh, Donez, uh, Klaus Anderson, I had gone to, you know, Denmark uh, to uh, learn ovarian tissue cryopreservation. And we've done uh, about four so far in our clinic. But it's a fantastic technique which helps a lot of girls, okay? Yes. Then uh, this is the latest uh, systemic review about... Uh, 
you know birth live birth rate after uh, ovarian tissue cryopreservation which was in 2019 it was published 20 studies 40 patients and it's 20 point uh, 20 uh, you know the live birth rates were somewhere from 4% to 14%. But remember, these are all, uh, you know, different, different, because a lot of patients are told to conceive naturally. So that has not been included in it as yet. So there is a bias in this uh, systemic review because of the studies which were included. Then, of course, uh, uh, remember that leukemia is the worst. So refrain from transplanting the uh, ovarian tissue in cases of leukemia because there are micro metastases which you cannot see. And autotransplantation is safe in lymphoma patients. And uh, laparoscopic uh, oophorectomy, you know, in children you cannot preserve the eggs. So in children, it has been done. This was 2019. And ovarian tissue cryopreservation remains an experimental means of fertility preservation in children. But it has shown to give good results. And there was a meta-analysis which showed that it has really good results. And uh, this is xenotrans. There are new techniques which are there, xenotransplantation. So you can transplant the ovarian tissue into immunodeficient animals to generate oocytes, uh, especially when the, there's a high risk of tumor cell contamination in the ovarian tissue, and oocytes can be obtained, uh, you know, uh, to create the embryos so far no generation of embryos then in vitro growth is cultivation of the ovary tissue or isolated follicles to generate oocytes and uh, artificial ovary let me talk about that so octe is a guy who's done fantastic work in breast cancer and in uh, american journal of obgy in jan 2016 he published these two case studies where you know he used alloderm. Alloderm is what it's used in cosmetic surgery. It's an extracellular uh, tissue matrix. Okay, yeah. and you put on it any type of a stem cell or any type of a cell, it creates that uh, tissue. So, say you want to create a muscle, you want to create uh, you know a bone, you just put this alloderm and uh, you seed it with that particular tissue. So what Octa did was that in these patients, I think one was a Hodgkin's uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma and one was a uh, leukemia patient. He yeah. took follicles from the ovary. He decellularized that ovary completely. So there were only primordial follicles. So there's absolutely no cancer cell, only follicle. He took those follicles and he put it on this ECTM, alloderm. It is cultured outside the body for two weeks. And after two weeks, the ovary is nicely formed. And then this is taken in with the laparoscopy and put it put back into the ovarian fossa. And he achieved pregnancies in these two patients. So okay. it's fantastic. Susan Paul. Yeah. Susan Paul's conference I attended in 2019 in New York. She has created an artificial ovary, uh, you know, using a 3D imprinting of the ovary. And uh, you can do that. So sky is the limit to what you can do. And you can really use technology to do this. Okay. So I would like to say that friends, remember, life exists after cancer. You know, when there's cancer, people just give up on everything. But I think cancer treatments today are good. People do survive and they want to become pregnant. I have so many patients who come back and say they are, you know, they are lymphoma survivors, etc. They want to have a child. So life exists after cancer. Talk to them about their fertility preservation. Fertility insurance for girls is like a life insurance. Fertility focus to pelvic surgery needs to be integral to training because you cannot do pelvic surgery like a butcher and ruin those ovaries. You need to treat that ovary with love, with passion, with care so that you don't damage her future fertility. And one take home message which I want you to take back. Look at these two scenarios. This happens in our day to day life. I had this one girl who was married and who was working. She had a child and she took leave. She got married, you know, at 34, 35, everybody gets married at that age. She had a child, she took leave. 
one or two years, three years go and all that. She comes back to her job. She's at the same position at work. Then they both decide that she wants to have a second child. She again takes a leave. So she's at the same position in her career for six, after six to seven years after having two children. She's busy with child rearing because obviously they can't afford to have a, you know, nanny and everything. It becomes difficult to do everything. Reaches 40 with very little advancement in career. Take a look at the other girl on the other side. She's married and working. She comes to me and freezes her eggs. She advances in her job, advances in her career, and becomes the CEO of a company at the age of 40. Has a child at 40, employs health, and achieves whatever she wants to do. People today, women need to have the right to be able to choose what they want to do. And this biological clock should not stop them from doing what they want, need to do. And this is women empowerment. And we as doctors should be able to give them this choice. I'm not saying do it in every woman. But if the girl wants it, who are we to deny it to her? It is an ethical conundrum. But now, with all the girls being healthy, I think we are all treating, you know, pregnant, elderly pregnancies. And with the advances in technology, we can definitely take care of them. And I think it is that girl's right. It is important to empower her and give her that option. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you help a biological clock from ticking forward ma'am as you told about this ma'am is it any legal implications there are some queries by the doctor is it any legal implications no no freezing any other no, specific no, permit no. Has any? 2012 yeah. asrm declared it as non you know before that it was experimental but yeah. now it's non-experimental it's so, ma uh, absolutely legally permissible Ma'am, for that, they have to take any other additional permission from the PCP and DT? I mean, if you have an IVF permission, that's okay. You don't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ma'am, as you mentioned in your lecture, that uh, every time we have not to be uh, focused on a single AMH reading. We have to do at least two AMH readings, yeah. uh, minimum four to six weeks apart. Two to four no. weeks. Yeah, two to four weeks. Patient will go to another center. Doctor, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, ma'am, so in between this four weeks, two to four weeks apart, uh, what's your protocol? You start at that time the supplements or you start only after the two readings? No, I start after the two readings, but I don't give DHA plus, but I give arginine, I give CoQ. I just okay. hold DHA. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Weber, we any questions, ma'am? Because so many doctors join via Facebook and YouTube live. Oh. Ma'am, here to all are congratulating and saying excellent lecture. Weber, please share the questions here. If any questions are there on the Facebook. Ma'am, only one second. I'm just checking for the questions. No problem. No problem. I think it was, how long did I talk? 40 minutes. Oh my God. Oh, that was amazing, ma'am. I'm seeing so many compliments are now coming. Rose, Dr. Rosi Sharma, really very good lecture. All are complimenting. So thank you. Thank you so much. Ma'am, I got that privilege. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for enlightening all of us. Ma'am, all are giving the compliments. Yes. All are giving the compliments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, ma'am, for giving your precious time to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Enlightening for all of us by your immense knowledge. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. So with this, friends, we are winding up now today's session. Thank you to Innova Care Life Sciences also. Constantly doing this educational activities. So, friends, it's the full September and October month as our Foxy is full of 
guru so i am celebrating this full september and october month as a teachers day celebration and all the stalwarts are on this my show then again on uh, yesterday you have heard all of you have heard the dr pai sir today the nandita ma'am and next week we are having the dr rishma pai madam and dr narin malhotra sir so friends i think ritu i want to say thank you to everybody who is logged in i mean yeah. pleasure that you are all there and thank you enough care i think sankalp and uh, it was really nice of them to arrange it and i'm so happy are they still there <laughs> yeah yeah over to you sankalp yeah, are you here who <laughs> <Poor> guys <laughs> I don't know whether they are or not. Yes, I'm just remember. Yeah, madam, I'm saying before our career, when we started our career in this field, we used to meet you till nine thirty, ten o'clock. We used to wait there in the opera house uh-huh. to meet the call. I know. Thank you so much, and very, uh, I'm very happy to see you that you have come on our show. This is our own company, ma'am. You know, okay, Life Sciences is our own. Achha. And, okay. And we feel that because of your help and kind support, which you have, uh, you know. Uh, in the earlier days, no we have reached this level. I can't say no to Ritu. Yeah. I thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's always a pleasure. It's so much yeah. of honor that you've given me. I think I really enjoyed it, and I also enjoyed it. You could see I was enjoying myself. So. Thank, thank you, you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, we are lucky to have you. Hi. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doctor Nandiya. Thanks a lot, Doctor Ritu. Thanks a lot. Yeah. On, on, okay. you know, Thank you, Amaji. With this, friends, we are winding up the today's session. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Good night to all of you. Bye bye. Good night. Yeah.